Ineos Grenadier was, the idea of it was conceived in the Grenadier pub in uh, London, which is 16 uh, meters above sea level. And uh, we are currently in the highest pub in Africa. Uh, so it was all about telling the story about how it was, the, the idea of the car was conceived and now we are sitting here with Prototype 2s, which is the second wave of the uh, prototypes, a much more refined vehicle as to what we saw in the pr Prototype 1s. The Prototype 1s, we did all of the testing, over 1.8 million kilometers of testing in 15 different countries. And now we've got a bit more of a finalized product, a bit more refined product uh, that we can actually let the media see and let people drive in. And that is why we, we thought that this could be a, a good suit for the vehicle and, and a good trip to, to let you guys get in uh, behind the wheel. Well, it's been a bucket list for mine for the last two years because I've been watching the development of the vehicle and it's really been fascinating and I think it's an amazing vehicle. I don't think the Sony Pass tested it in any way, so very capable and very comfortable and I think there's going to be some serious competition out there now. We like to say it's British design, German engineering, but built for Africa. So Jim Radcliffe's a big 4x4 enthusiast, big Africa enthusiast, and um, that's why the vehicle has to be tested in the field, not, not lab testing. Tough terrain, all different kinds of temperatures, uh, heat, cold, uh, rocks, sand, so, and I mean, Africa's got all of those kinds of terrains. We've been waiting for this for quite a while, and um, I think, after all the hype, there were lots of expectations on the car. So, you know, we, we kind of, when you get into it and you, you start driving and you think, okay, is all the hype worth it? Um, I really do think it is. It's a new uh, vehicle, but it's got an old soul. It's box section, ladder frame chassis, solid axles front and rear, coil suspension, um, but still having the luxury inside. It doesn't have to be an uncomfortable vehicle. It's got a um, center console, gives you all of the information that you need, yet keeping electronics down to a bare minimum. What I do like as well is kind of the uh, the harking back to a, a aeronautic feel, with all the switch gear, you know, on the top like you'd have in an aircraft. I don't think there's anything else quite like it on the market anymore. So it kind of harks back to a proper four x four. First of all, the vehicle was developed uh, uh, with functionality in, uh, in mind, uh, practicality, and then also durability. Looks came last. If you're looking at, at all of the iconic 4x4s that, that stood the test of time in, in, in the past, a lot of them had the same kind of uh, box shape, round lights. Um, nothing is there for aesthetic purposes. Everything is there for function. So the nice thing is not, is there's not so many technical things inside there, you know, it's got a solid rear axle, it's got those coil springs, uh, so you, it's all about driver input now, which is, you know, the modern cars sometimes too much technical, you don't have to drive them, but this one, you still get that driver involvement, which is absolutely amazing. We all know the old, if I say old in inverted commas, BMW engines, they are bulletproof. The low down torque is there, and then the ZF gearbox, super smooth, to be honest. Um, and the combination works. And I think the big surprise is not just the off road performance, but also the on road performance. There's not a lot of body roll, and it feels very stable, and that's what you want. Look, it's expensive, but then most cars are expensive today, you know, so it's not out of the, the ballpark for what you are going to be paying for, you know, a, a Defender, a Land Rover Defender or a Toyota Cruiser, you know. Um, so it's expensive, but it's not that expensive. And for people that, that want it, you know, and that can afford it, you know, they'll pay the price for it.